Assalamu alaikum students. Hope you all are fine. Today, once again, I welcome you to my class. Today, we shall discuss chapter number 8, Force and Pressure. My dear students, in our everyday activities, we use to do different types of work. And whatever the work we do, we apply a little or more force at the time of doing the work. So what does this force mean? Let us consider an example. Suppose you wanted to open the drawer of your cupboard. So at the time when you wanted to open the drawer of your cupboard, what you used to do? You try to pull the cupboard. And at the time when you wanted to close the cupboard, you, sorry, at the time when you wanted to close the drawer of the cupboard, you push the drawer. So, in either of the case, at the time of pushing as well as at the time of pulling, what we used to do is that we are applying force. So, we can say a force is nothing but F is a push or a pull. Secondly, we shall learn about what a force does. We know at the time of doing work, we use this force. So by applying this force, what happens or what does it causes or what does it does? So here we have got four points. Force causes movement. Second point, force changes speed. And the third point, force changes direction of motion and the last point force changes shapes and sizes so let us discuss one by one force causes movement how this force causes movement we know that at the time when we want to walk if you don't have any energy in your body we know we will not be able to work so when we apply force on our body to move our legs what happens we are able to walk you can consider many examples suppose you have got a book on the table so the book on the table will remain in its place until and unless you apply any external force upon it so you consider that this marker which i have kept here this marker it will not move from its place when you go for letting the marker to move to a little bit you need to apply little force in the other direction suppose you are pushing so when you push the marker will move in the other direction so it is the force which you have applied and which has led to move the mark marker secondly force changes speed how this force changes speed we know the vehicles that runs on the road it moves on the road having different speeds or a swimmer is swimming on the pool having a speed so every movement that we have has a speed in it and this speed is caused by the force only You can ex uh, consider examples like a uh, swing. Suppose a small boy is sitting on the swing and a girl standing at the back of the swing is pushing the small boy on the swing. So when the girl will push the small boy on the sitting on the swing, what will happen is that the small boy will move faster, will move faster with a speed. And at times when the girl who is standing back of the swing pulls the swing then what will happen the swing will reduce its speed so from this we can understand that it is the force which leads to change the speed of the motion of an object or you can consider a ball <coughs> at the time when a boy kicks the ball what happens is that the ball starts moving or it 
uh, moves or it goes upwards. So if another player wants to stop the ball, then what he has to do? He has to kick the ball from the other direction. Yes. So it is the force which helps to change the speed of the motion of an object. Nextly, force can also change the direction of motion. We know that uh, at the time when anything is in a moving state, suppose you have got a spin top, you are playing with the spin top by moving the spin top. So when you spin the top, what happens is that this, the spin top will move continuously. And at the, in the middle, when the spin is having the uh, motion or it is in moving state, at that time, if you try to touch the spin top, what happens? The spin top, it stops moving. Or you can take a small toy car. The small toy car is moving in this direction. Consider a small toy car is moving in this is moving in this direction. So what will happen is that after moving in this direction, the road goes in this direction. That means he has to take a U-turn. At first, the uh, car will move straight. Then later on, it has to take a U-turn to change the direction. So what the car has to do is that it, uh, by applying the force, on the steerings of the brake, on the steerings of the vehicle, sorry, what happens? The driver is able to change the direction of the car. So it is the force which has helped to change the direction of the motion of an object. The object was in motion, the vehicle was in motion, it is in it was in moving state. So have, being in the moving state, it is able to change the direction. So it is possible only because of force only because of force nextly force can also change shapes and sizes how this force changes the shapes and sizes in here in this case also you can take some examples like uh, a length of paper by taking the length of paper you have got a rectangular shaped length paper. So taking that paper, if you want to draw a small board, if you want to small draw a small board, then you can fold it and you can design the rectangular shaped paper into a board. So at first it was in the shape of a rectangle and later on it has taken the shape of a board. How it has taken the shape of the board? It is because of the force that you have applied to fold the papers and later on it got set into a design of a board. Or you can take uh, the towel that you have in your house or any kind of cloth. Suppose this cloth, if you can see that cloth is in this size or in this shape. Now if you want to change the shape of this cloth, then you can fold the cloth in this, uh, in this way by applying a little amount of force, then you can see that it has taken the shape of a ball. Yes. So likewise, we can change the shapes and sizes of any objects by applying force. Now, we shall learn about the different types of forces. Usually, so far, we know that there is only two different types of forces. They are contact force and non-contact forces. Whatever the force we have discussed so far, in all, almost all the force uh, activities, we have applied the forces by coming in contact with the object. As I have given the example of the 
ball until and unless you uh, kick the ball by touching the ball what will happen the ball will not move from its position or i've given the example of the marker until and unless your fingers come in contact with the marker the marker will not move from its position so from these all forces we have learned about the force x by coming in contact with the object so all those forces that works or that takes place by having contact with the object such forces are called contact forces and these contact forces also takes place only due to the execution of muscles we know to apply force we need muscles so a muscular force is required to come in uh, to come in the execution of the contact forces we require the execution of our own muscles to let the force act on the object so such forces are called contact forces and the second type of force is non contact force non contact forces that means there are some forces which can act on an object without touching the object it can act on the object from a distance for example we know the magnetic force the electrostatic force or the gravitational force all these forces are able to act from a distance without coming in contact with the object so they are non contact forces but before we discuss these non contact forces we need to discuss a very important contact force which is known as frictional force so my dear students what is frictional force before you try to understand this frictional force we need to know what is friction each and every activities that we do has friction in it when you go on rubbing your hands in this way then what happens is that your palms gets heated up do you know why your palms gets heated up it is because of the friction that acts in between the surfaces of the contact of both the palms so this friction is a force which always acts opposite to the direction of the motion of an object for example for example you consider this is a car and the car was at rest so when the car was at rest in that state we are able to see that the car is not able to move from its position so have you ever imagined why the car has is not moving from its position it is only because of this frictional force it is only because of this frictional force everything that you see around you is in its state of rest why because of this frictional force only this frictional force it acts on the object from every direction it acts on the object in every direction and it opposes the motion of the object that means it does not allow the object to have any movement but sometimes we see that an object is able to move for example you consider this car as a toy car now if you give the switch then what will happen the car will start moving yes 
why why it will start moving it is because the car has got some kinetic energy when you have given the switch the car has got some kinetic energy and it is able to move so at the time when the car will move in this direction what will happen is that will the friction not act on the car no the car friction frictional force will again will also be acting on the car at that state of motion even it will frictional force it acts on objects whether it is in stationary state or it whether it is in motion state so there are two different types of friction known as static friction and kinetic friction we have learned about the static friction at the time when the any object is at rest static friction used to act upon it and it opposes the motion of the object it does not allow the object to move from its position you can consider the book that you have on the table the book will remain on its place it will not move from its place until and unless any external force is applied on it so what lets the book to be in its place it is because of the frictional force because this frictional force it acts on the object in every direction when the object is at rest but when the object is in motion you consider this toy car is moving in this direction so when the toy car will move in this direction what will happen is that the frictional force will act from the opposite direction but why the car, even though the frictional force is acting on the car in the opposite direction the car is not getting stopped why why it is moving why it is in motion because the motion of the car sorry the uh, force applied by the car is more as compared to the force applied by the friction so many a times we see the things are moving yes many things we see they are in the moving state why did don't get stopped or why did uh, they don't get at, at a stationary state because they have got the force more than the frictional force so when the frictional force is more the object will be able to move or it will be able to have motion and at the time when the frictional force will be less then what will happen sorry at the time when the frictional force will be more then the object will not be able to move it will be in its state of rest because we have learned that frictional force always opposes the motion of an object static and kinetic friction friction does not only depend on the nature of the surfaces in contact so how does this friction acts on the objects based on the nature of the surfaces if the surface of the object is smooth then what do you think the frictional force which will be acting on the smooth surface will be more or less okay no answer i understood now you can uh, or you can take the example of the slippery road it was a rainy day the road was very slippery so what will happen is that the vehicles which will be riding on the slippery road will they be will the driver be able to control the uh, vehicle properly at the time of riding no not at all why because the road is very much slippery and why it is slippery because of less friction many a times when your floors are polished you get slipped in your houses why because of less friction because of less friction when you try to write on the glass you are not able to write on the glass properly using a pencil why because the glass has got very less friction so this friction is in some cases it is very useful to us if the road is bulky it is rough then what will happen the friction which will be more in that very rough surface so frictional force does not only depend on the nature of the surfaces in contact it also depends on whether something is moving or over the surface or it is stationary at the time when the object is at a stationary state what will happen the frictional force will act 
and even at the time when the object is at the motion state the frictional force will act and if the force acting on the object which is in motion is more than the object will be have able to have motion or it will be able to have movement but if the object by applying force is not able to exert the force of friction then what will happen the object will not be able to move so to let anything to move the force applied on the object must be more as the frictional force and as i've said regarding the smoother and the rough surfaces smooth surfaces always has less friction and rough surfaces always has more friction here you need to remember two things that is a body starts moving when the body force applied is greater than the frictional force a body will always be in its state of motion when the force applied is greater than the frictional force and secondly in case of the static friction what happens the frictional force is always more and in case of the kinetic friction what happens is that the frictional force is less frictional force sometimes it is very helpful to us and sometimes it also causes problems as you have learnt the helpfulness of friction that we are able to write comfortably on the papers we are able to walk comfortably on the road why because of friction so in many cases friction is helpful but not only always but it is not said that all friction is always helpful sometimes it creates a problem for us let us see some of the examples how friction causes problems every year your parents used to purchase new slippers and shoes for you so what lets your parents to buy new shoes and slippers every year sometimes in some of your cases your parents used may have to buy these shoes or slippers at least twice or thrice in a year why uh, it is the only reason is that you have got a big hole at the sole of your shoes or the slipper has got torn or your shoe has got torn so what is this uh, what is this torn or what the hole that we see in the shoes because of it is only because of the friction because of this friction what happens is that the soles of our shoes gets worn out and or you can even take the examples of some machines parts of a machine the parts of machine to gets wear down because of continuous use because of continuous use and not this is this is not only only the examples of the problems which causes co or the problems that causes due to friction but there are many other examples like you can see when we use any machines for long hours what happens is that the machine gets hot it increases its temperature so the heat what is produced by the machine is not good for the machine it may let the machine to get damaged or get spoiled so it is because of friction only nextly friction also wastes energy suppose you are riding a bicycle while riding a bicycle what happens is that you get tired if you think that you are uh, riding it just to from your uh, just a nearby distance riding the bicycle just to a nearby distance then you may not get tired but if you ride the bicycle continuously for one or two hours on the road then what will happen you may start sweating for from your body and you may get tired you may feel thirsty you may feel like drinking water so what lets you feel tired it is the friction which has 
wastes the energy from your body so what we do to reduce the friction on the bicycles what we used to do we used to apply certain types of oils or grease like things in between the parts of the pedals and all so that we, we don't have to apply much force or much energy at the time of riding the bicycle so these are some of the problems related to friction now i shall discuss about streamlining when you were in class 6 you might have learned about this streamlined or streamlined body or streamlining so this streamlining it is mainly related to all those things that has movement in air and water we know air and water offer resistance to movement offer resistance to movement so all those birds or the that flies in the sky their body shaft is streamlined or if we talk about the fishes that swims under water their body too is streamlined so what is the reason that they are having a streamlined body it is because when the fishes or the birds has the movement they need to have resistance over the air and the water and let them overcome the resistance and let them let their movement in a comfortable way cars airplane ships are again designed to have a streamlined body why because they need to have resistance offered by the air or water to have their movement sometimes when we find that the friction is very less what we used to do we are not able to walk comfortably on the road the road is very slippery so what we used to do we may bring some dry mud or sand something like this and we used to try throw it on the road to reduce the friction sorry not to reduce the friction to increase the friction at first in a the road was very slippery that means the friction was less so you need to increase the friction so that you will be able to walk comfortably so increasing friction is sometimes very helpful a driver will be able to drive his vehicle comfortably and likewise many examples we can give uh, to increase the friction the soles of our shoes have certain types of groves even the tires of the vehicles has got groves so what is this groves found in the soles of the shoes or the soles of the tires sorry the soles of the shoes and the tires of vehicles this so groves that we have in the tires and the soles of shoes it helps to increase the friction it helps to increase the friction and lets us walk comfortably and also lets the vehicle ride comfortably on the road now as i have said that there are two types of forces contact and non contact forces i have already said to you that non contact forces are those forces which can act from a distance we don't have to apply the force by coming in contact with the object it can act from a distance so let us discuss some of the non contact forces number 1 magnetic force as you all know what is a magnet a magnet is a thing which helps to attract magnetic particles or iron particles towards it from a distance consider this is a magnet this is a magnet and this is a iron particle if you place the magnet here in this position placing the iron particle in this position what will happen you can see that the iron particle gets attracted to the magnet so 
the force which acts on the iron particle to attract towards it to attract the iron particles towards it is nothing but magnetic force and the phenomenon is known as magnetism the second non contact force is electrostatic electrostatic force to understand this you can do an activity consider that you have a comb in your hand and taking the comb you rub the comb in your hair for about 2 to 3 minutes totally you go on rubbing the comb on your hair for about 2 to 3 minutes and try to attract some small pieces of paper you can see that the small pieces of paper they get drawn to the comb so how does the small pieces of paper gets drawn to the comb or how that does it get got attracted to the comb it is only because of a certain kind of force what is known as electrostatic force nextly the non contact force is gravitational force students you might have heard about sir isaac newton this scientist sir isaac newton he is a physicist as well as a mathematician he was a very great mathematician as well as a physician he is the one who has discovered this gravitational force and he has given a law against the force of gravitation known as newton's law of gravitation my dear students this gravitational force is a force which acts on the object to attract the object towards it it's a force of gravity that exerted by the earth which always attracts things towards it you know if you have a thing in your hand and throw upwards what will happen is that the thing right after you throw up it will fall down why why it will fall down it will fall down only because of a certain kind of force the force has attracted the thing that you have thrown up so the force which has attracted the thing which you have thrown up is nothing but the gravitational force and this force from where it comes it comes from the gravity of the earth sir isaac newton he has discovered this gravitational force once when he was sitting under an apple tree suddenly an apple fall on his head from the tree so as soon as the apple fall on his upon his head he looked upwards and he was gazing upwards in the tree he was seeing who has thrown the apple on his head or he was trying to understand how the apple has apple has fallen on his head there was nothing no birds or no monkeys or no other animals but how the apple has fallen on his head then slowly and slowly he started working upon it and he has got that it is because of a force which is acted upon by the gravity of the earth and he has given the name as gravitational force and the law that he has given is newton's law of gravitation according to to newton's law of gravitation each and every objects in the universe they are attracted by each other by a force and that force is known as gravitational force or we can say newton's law of gravitation now you might be thinking if each and every objects in the universe is attracted by 
a certain kind of force, then why we all are not getting attracted towards each other? You might be thinking, the table that you have near you, why it is not getting in contact with you? Or the board that you can see right at my back, why it is not coming in contact with me? Why it is not getting attracted in my body? Because all the objects has got different muscles. It depends on the muscles of the two bodies. It depends on the muscles of the two bodies. Based on the muscles of the two bodies, the objects the get attracted. If you take a small iron nail and nearby the iron nail, if you place an place a magnet, you can see the mass of the iron nail would be less, very less as compared to the mass of the magnet. So what happens? The iron nail easily gets attracted by the magnet. So all the objects they are attracted by certain types of force which is known as gravitational force and they don't get attracted at times they don't get attracted only because of the masses the problem is because of the masses the gravitational force it depends on the masses of the two bodies that are concerned now i have completed the discussion of force now we are going to discuss about pressure my dear students pressure <coughs> we can see we can see this pressure sometimes we can feel it like the force so what is this pressure it can be defined as a force that we apply per unit area. Suppose you want to cut something. You have taken an apple in your hand and you want to cut the apple. So if the knife that you are using to cut the apple is sharp, then what will happen? You will be able to cut the apple very comfortably. You don't have to apply much force upon it. And the with a very less force, the pressure which will be exerted on, on the surface area of, or in contact with the knife will be very much. But in case if you have a blunt knife, if you take a blunt knife to cut the apple, then what will happen is that the force that you apply on the knife to cut the apple will get divided. It will get divided and the pressure exerted on the apple will be less so force is nothing but sorry pressure is nothing but the force that we apply per unit area and the SI unit of pressure is Newton per meter square Newton per meter square here you can use this meter as small m Newton per meter square so how do we get this SI unit this S Newton per meter square is a SI unit of pressure how we are able to get this unit you can see as we know the unit of force is Newton and the unit of area is meter square so from this we are able to understand that the SI unit of pressure is Newton per meter square you can take many everyday examples to understand or to make your concept clear regarding pressure if you take a sharp pin to purge a paper then what will happen you will be able to purge the paper very easily but in case of the sharp pin if you take a blunt pin then what will happen you will find trouble there will be trouble to purge the paper so this pressure 
in case of the blunt pin in case of the blunt pin it gets divided the force that you will be applying on the blunt pin you consider 10 newton of force you have applied so the 10 newton of force which you have applied on the blunt pin to purge the paper will not help you to do the work comfortably will not allow you to purge the paper comfortably why because this 10 newton of force which you have applied will get divided and you will face problem but at the time when the pin is sharp what will happen the 10 newton of force which you will apply will act at one point only it will not get divided so we find comfortable to use sharp things like knives blades pins needles to use it at the time when we do the work so pressure is nothing but is the force that we apply per unit area and its SI unit is Newton per meter square now we shall learn how this pressure is exerted by liquids pressure exerted by liquids students to understand this very clearly you can take two water bottles consider this is a plastic water bottle and I have met four holes as A, B, C and D and in the second case you take another water bottle I'm not so good in drawing so don't laugh at all you can see another water bottle so in the second bottle what you need to do is that you have to make the hole at the same at the same place consider here one and here one at the same place so now you fill the water bottles with water or you can do like this first you fill this the first bottle with water and you keep place the bottle under a tray so when you will place the bottle under the tray and fill the bottle with water what will happen you will see the waters will be coming out through the holes that I have met so at last you try to observe at last you try to observe the waters that are coming out through all these four holes as a b c and d what you will see is that the water that is coming out from point a will fall to this position the water that coming out from point b will fall in this position the water that comes out from c will fall a little bit ahead and the water that is coming out from the last point that is at the depth will be falling at a far distance so students what do you have understand from this we have understood that pressure increases with the depth pressure increases with the depth of water in the first case now if you observe the second water bottle in the second water bottle you have met the holes at the same distance at the same distance here one and here you have met one now the same bottle you fill up with water and place it under a tray what you will see is that the water which will be coming out from both the holes will be falling at the same distance they will not have any changes you might have seen in some places uh, like the water is falling out from uh, many small small holes coming out through many small small low holes in such a way 
and it is falling at equal distance coming out from the same holes same small small holes which are maintained so it looks quite beautiful when the water comes out so a liquid exerts the same pressure in all directions at a given depth if the holes are met at the same place then the liquid will exert the same pressure in all the directions to measure the liquid pressure pressure that is exerted by the liquid we can use an instrument which is known as manometer manometer now we have got the last topic that is atmospheric pressure or we can even call year pressure sorry atmospheric pressure or year pressure we know that we are surrounded by a blanket of year around us and this year that is surrounding us or that has surrounded us does it makes us feel heavy no if you take a big sack filled with stones on your head what do you will feel you will feel that you are being compressed or you have been pressed by something you will not be feeling comfortable at all but we know that this year is surrounded surrounded us the year has been surrounded us we are surrounded by the year and we are not able to feel the mass that the year has upon us but year too has a mass to understand how this year has a mass you can do various types of activities how this year exerts mass or how it exerts a pressure upon our body or upon the things that we see around us year has mass and is attracted by the force of gravity why why it is having a mass and why it is attracted by the force of gravity like each and everything we have learned each and everything that we have around us or in the universe is attracted by a force known as gravitational force so year 2 is attracted by the gravitational force and it also has a mass so because of the mass and because of the attraction of the gravity year also helps in exerting pressure and the pressure which is exerted by year is known as atmospheric pressure let us take an example you take a balloon you all know what is a balloon small children used to play with this and it is made of rubber when we blow air inside the balloon the balloon used to blow big size so you take a balloon and try to blow air inside a balloon when you blow air inside a balloon you, what you will notice you will notice that the balloon will blow big in size it will at first it will be small then slowly and slowly it will become bigger and bigger then at last you will feel that after touching the balloon you will feel that you will not be able to stretch the balloon anymore it has become a little bit fast before blowing the balloon inside the ear when you stretch you are able to stretch the balloon but after blowing the ear to at a certain point you will come to know that the material of the balloon cannot stretch anymore so at that very point if you try to blow or if you try to pump more ear then what will happen the balloon will get burst so why did the balloon burst is it because someone has burst the balloon with a sharp pin no it is because of the year pressure pressure or the year pressure that you have felt inside the balloon 
after it has reached the certain point that it is not able to stretch anymore so from all these activities we can understand the gear 2 has got a pressure and is called atmospheric pressure my dear students if you want to make your concept very clear then please you refer points to remember and go through it which is given in page number 90 and if you have any queries at the time when you watch the video if you have any queries or any questions that you want to clarify it you can put your queries on the comment box so wish you a very good day thank you thank you students